All right, the, the purpose of this is to uh, explain deferred tax accounting and in particular to show how we can use Excel to make things, make life a little easier. So this, this is a problem from Spiceland uh, Intermediate Accounting. Um, I believe it's the 10th edition, and it says eight independent situations are described below. Each involves future deductible amounts and or future taxable amounts in millions. And then it says for each situation, determine taxable income, assuming that pre-tax accounting income is a hundred million. And so what I want to do is just come up with a base case, I'll call this the base case. And what I'm going to do is say that this is going to be, um, <clears throat> book income, uh, I, in fact, I'll just call it book, and taxable. And this is your tax return. And I'll have revenue over here, and expenses, we'll just call it expense, and pre-tax slash taxable income, and the tax rate Let's uh, let's assume that the tax rate it doesn't ask you to do this, but I'm going to I'm going to Im imply it as 40 percent, 40 percent, and equals after tax income. We don't have to worry about that part. I want to put a little line under this, make it fancy, and I'm going to it it says that pre-tax book income is a hundred million. And I'm going to put that, sorry, 100 million in yellow because that's kind of fixed. We're, we're always assuming across all situations that pre-tax book income is, is 100. And now my base case is, I'll, let's assume that uh, revenue is 150 and expenses are 50. And let's assume that it's... Um, exactly the same over here, 150 and 50. And the taxable income is the excess of revenues minus expenses. And in each case, we have a tax rate of 40%. So we'll say, uh, in fact, uh, that is equal to 0.4 times the pre-tax book income and we'll say the same thing over here as 0.4 times the pre the taxable income. And so that's, um, and uh, let me just say tax, and we'll put in parentheses the rate equal is 40%, right, like there. And that's the base case. Now let and in that particular case, the entry looks like this. The tax entry looks like this. We're going to have uh, income tax expense and income tax payable. And the, we'll put this as debits and credits like here with a line under there, tax expense is going to be from this number right here off of book, and tax payable is going to be from this number right here. And this tax payable, and, and the difference, if it's a credit, is going to be a deferred tax liability. If it's a debit, it's going to be a deferred tax asset. And that all assumes uh, that that the future tax rates expected the expected future tax rates remain are expected to be the same to be the same as the current 40% rate if, if not, then we would have to adjust that deferred tax asset or liability based upon the expected future tax rate. So then um, what we're going to do in case number one, for example, and I'm probably going to skip some of these just for brevity, is we're going to say, all right, well, let's take this same 
um, well, base case, and we'll put it down here. Now we're going to call this one, and it says everything's the same except that now we're reporting expenses first on the income statement. So this is going to be, instead of 50, it's going to be 70. But notice that pre-tax book income is still only 100. That yellow amount is fixed. So that means the revenue must be 170. And since there's no difference um, in revenue between the, the tax return and the income statement, this is going to have to stay the same at 170. And expense, uh, yeah, it was $70 larger on the income statement, only 50 on the tax return, and that's what we end up with here. So we'll take this tax entry, copy that down, and paste it right here. And in that case, we're going to have a deferred tax asset for the difference because we need a debit for eight right there, okay? So now we'll take the same thing, the same case, and we'll go down, and let's say we go down to um, five and then we'll do eight. So I, I don't wanna do all of them, but you can see that it takes a while. So let, let's paste this down here. We'll call this five. And in five, we're going to have this basic here. We're going to say, well, we're going to have expenses going to be in earlier for the income statement. So that's going to be 70 here. And that means that this would have to be 170 in order to keep our pre-tax book income at 100. And then, and then we have, okay, this is, um, I'm sorry, we're doing number five. Our revenue would have to be, um, yeah, 170 before we record this, uh, this revenue here uh, that's going to be earlier. So, um, this is going to have to be 180, 185, 185, and that 185 is because we've we've got. How do we do that? If we have. Um, The revenue here is our base case is 150 and we want to keep the hundred so we're going to have higher revenue and higher expense so let's let's adjust the expense for okay so then we're going to adjust that expense from one from 50 to 70 and that gives us 170. Yeah, that's what we want to do. It is equal to this plus the 70. Sorry, let's try it again. This is equal to plus 70 is one, 170. And then we say, wait a second, we've got uh, revenue that is $15 earlier for book purposes. That means this has to be $15 smaller. So that's going to be equal to this minus 15 because we reported that earlier. Um, and the expense is still going to be the base expense for, um, for tax purposes. So we end up with uh, 105 of pre-tax our taxable income. Over here in the journal entry, we're going to need a deferred tax asset for
for the difference to there. It gets a little, a little kind of hairy there, right? Let's try number eight. And in number eight, well, well, we'll copy the base case again. Hopefully it'll go a little smoother this time. But you really have to think through the details, might be my main point. So this is number eight. And here we'd, we, have, we start out with a base case of, we want to keep that pre-tax taxable income as 100. And in number eight, we're going to have higher expense for for the income statement, so that's going to be 70. And we have, that makes this 170, right? It's got to be the total of those. Um, that is equal to the taxable in, or pre-tax income plus the book expense, 170. And then in number eight, we've got $10 more of revenue that's being reported early for book purposes. So that should be a net $10 difference. That is equal to the 170 minus 10. We've got the revenue right. But then we also have, uh, we had reported the full 20 early here. Let's adjust this and that should be um, another 10 here. So it's going to be equal to 50, the base case, plus 10, 60. And we end up with the same there. And that's a pretty simple journal entry because there's no deferred tax asset there. There's no difference. Okay. Is there a way that we can use Excel to make our life easier here? And I think there is. So let's, let's say that we start with pre-tax accounting income and we have the base case. And then we have cases one, and then this is going to be equal to this one plus one. And we'll copy this out three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we will mer we will center these and uh, we're gonna underline all of them. You make this pretty. We're gonna spread this out a little bit right here. We're gonna say pre-tax book income. And the pre-tax book income, we know the bottom line is 100. In all cases, that was a given. And we'll, pay, we'll paste that out. Now, we've got this additional revenue that's reported first on the income statement. So what we'll do is we'll say, well, less revenue We'll say adjustments revenue first on the income statement. And then we'll say expenses first on the income statement. And then we'll say Revenue first on the tax return. And then we'll say expenses first on the tax return. And then let's take a look at this. So if we've got revenue first, and what we're going to do, and the, the goal here is to get down to taxable income. It says for each situation, determine taxable income. Ooh, I got an extra K in there. It kind of looks a little Russian there. Income. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say this taxable income is equal to pre-tax income minus 
revenue that's reported first on the income statement that's not taxable yet. And then we've got these expenses that are on the GAAP financial statement but are not deductible. That means that they're going to add to our income, our taxable income. We'll add that expenses. And then we've got stuff that's on the tax return that's revenue that's not on the on the GAAP financial statement. So we've got to add that to get because that's included in taxable income. And then we've got these expenses that are first on the tax return that are not on the financial statement. And so we're going to subtract those because those get deducted first. And we end up with this taxable income because there's no adjustments here. We'll come down here and make this double underline. Now let's see if we can't use the Excel to do what seemed to be kind of tough and cumbersome over here on the left side. We can't make our life a little easier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the in the in the first case number one what we're we've got twenty dollars of expense that's reported first on the income statement we'll put that in here and by the way we'll copy this formula out here and we have 120 there in case number two we've got revenue that's reported first on the income statement and in case number three, we've got uh, revenue that's reported first on the tax return, 20. In case number four, we've got expense reported first on the, on the tax return, that's here. And we've got, in case number five, we've got $15 of, of revenue first on the income statement. Sorry, that's the wrong line. $15 of revenue first on the income statement. $20 of expense first on the income statement. Um, in case number six, we have nothing about the revenue on the income statement. We have $20 of expense on the income statement and $15 of revenue on the tax return that's going to come first. We can put that in here. In number seven, we have $15 of revenue on the income statement first, $20 of expense on the income statement first, and $10 of expense on the tax return. And finally, in number eight, we have $15 of revenue on the book, on the income statement first, 20 of expense on the income statement, five of revenue on the tax return first and 10 of expense on a tax return. And these are the, are the numbers that we call taxable income. And I'll just highlight these in blue. And look what we have. Let's see if we have taxable income and let's just adjust that. The first, the base case, well, that's the same, $100. That's this one. Then the second, in, in case number one, we have taxable income of 120 if we thought it through every step and we made the adjustments like, like they did. In case number five, we had taxable income of 105 and here it was 105 as well. In case number eight, we had taxable income of 40 and I'm, I'm sorry, taxable income of 100 and here it's 100, so that one works as well. So as opposed to just to thinking through every single thing, sometimes it's easier to use Excel and recognize that the adjustments are largely similar uh, across the different examples. And there's a great example, I think, of using a technology, Excel, to solve your problem, help solve your problem, not solve it, but to help solve the problem.